As the movie begins, we see a girl named Suwa captured against her will and put in a psychiatric facility. She's imprisoned, subject to harsh assault, and continuously injected with medications. Next, we're introduced to Nam Su, who's a programming director and runs a popular investigation TV show. However, he becomes engaged in a scandal in which it's exposed that his reality show is a fraud. As a result, his company uses him as a scapegoat and terminates him. One year later, Nam Su is approached by the same TV station from which he was suspended the previous year. This time, he's supposed to put on a ghost show by investigating haunted locations. While looking for haunted places, he comes across a notebook written by Su Ah with terrifying details about a psychiatric hospital that burned down. He then decides to visit that hospital for his new project to uncover the truth. Nam Su visits the hospital with his crew the next day, which includes a few fake ghosts. Soon after, they shoot some jump scare videos to thrill the audience. Moments later, their camera is snatched by an unidentified man who immediately stumbles and becomes unconscious. The crew then finds out that the man's entire body has been burnt, and therefore they take him to the hospital. At the hospital, Nam Su notices a tattoo on the man's body, which is also illustrated in the diary. When he rereads the journal, he realizes that the man is a nurse named Dong Sik, who used to work in the mental facility and also helped Su Ah there. When Nam Su questions him about the diary, Dong Sik gets anxious and his heart rate monitor starts beeping rapidly. Next, Nam Su's assistant informs him that she's conducting some investigation which confirms that Dong Sik formerly worked as a nurse in the mental hospital. She adds that the cause for the facility catching fire is still unknown and there isn't much information about it on the internet either. However, on the day of the fire, another police officer called Byung Ju was shot by his daughter, which resulted in causing great chaos in the city. Later, Nam Su conducts his own online research and contacts several authorities to learn more about the situation. He finds out that the police officer who was shot of the day of the fire was Su Ah's father, and the daughter was arrested on the spot for the murder. As a result, she's currently being held in a correctional facility since she's been declared insane, and her trial is still ongoing. Nam Su visits Su Ah in the correctional facility and tries to speak with her, but she does not respond. He goes to see her once again and asks about what happened at the mental hospital and why she murdered her father. Initially, she denies all of his claims and says she hasn't killed anyone. However, after some convincing, she eventually agrees to disclose the entire story of the incident. The following scene takes us to one year in the past when Suwa was abducted in the middle of the town. She's imprisoned there without knowing why. Later, the hospital's director, Hyung Sik, notifies her that she's insane and has been brought to the institution so that she can be treated. Suwa denies him, stating she's not insane and requests to leave but the nurses mercilessly beat her up and force her to take several medicines. Next, when Dong Sik visits Su Ah to give her medication, she stops him there and tells him that she's not mad and that she wants to go home. However, Dong Sik says that even though he knows she's not mad, there's nothing he can do about it. She then writes a phone number on paper and urges him to contact it and inform them about her location. When Dong Sik says that he cannot do such a thing, another nurse notices them and forces Su Ah to take the pills. Later, director Hyung Sik arrives and warns her that if she resists taking the pills, she won't be well soon and also increases the dose of her medicine. Back to the present, Nam Su conducts more research and finds that Hyung Sik is a close friend of Su Ah's father. While looking through the hospital's records, he discovers that no patient with the name of Su Ah had ever been recorded. He also discovers that Byung Ju is actually Su Ah's stepfather and that before her mother's death, all of her property was transferred to him. There were several allegations about the mental hospital, but because Byung Ju was a chief police officer, he always covered it up and defended the facility. In the meantime, Nam Su sends his assistant to find out who filed the complaints against the mental hospital. His assistant meets with a woman who discloses that her husband was diagnosed in that hospital and became severely ill after a few days of being discharged. And when they get to the hospital, they discover that his kidney has been removed. Nam Su goes back to see Su Ah and asks her if they used to remove organs at the mental institution. She says that whoever used to go to the operation room never returned. We are again taken to the past where director Hyung Sik is having sex with one of the hospital patients. On the other hand, Su Ah's life is degrading day by day. One day, she asks a patient to help her escape, but he demands that she touch him in return for the information. He then tells her that there's an escape route in the director's office and gives her a password. Sua then slashes his genitals with a knife and heads towards the director's office. While the rest of the staff is dealing with the injured man, 
Sua manages to open the director's office and escape down the tunnel. Director Hyung Sik orders his men to catch her, but she somehow runs away and comes across two female cops. She then gets inside the police car and breathes a sigh of relief, thinking she's finally safe. But after a while, the police officers leave her in front of the same mental facility and she's dragged inside once again. Back in the present, Nam Su requests his boss to cover this story since it can be really popular if the truth is revealed. He then goes to meet Su Ah and asks her about her father, but she keeps saying that her father died when she was a child. He tries to discuss Byung Ju's death with her, but she persistently denies, saying she doesn't know him. He then leaves, intending to see Dong Sik at the hospital but it turns out that he's escaped. In the next scene, Nam Su again goes to meet Su Ah, but this time, she refuses to meet him. He becomes frustrated and unsure of what to do next, but he goes on to broadcast his show on TV, revealing that Su Ah's father had forcefully sent her to a mental hospital where she was tortured for months. This news grabs major public attention, and several reporters try to meet Su Ah and interview her, but she refuses to meet with them and only agrees to meet with Nam Su to finally reveal the entire story. The following scene takes us back to a past in which Dong Sik discovers that the hospital engages in the organ trafficking business. Therefore, he dials the number Su Ah had previously written down, which turns out to be her boyfriend's number. Her boyfriend has been trying to find her for months and has even contacted the police, but he's gotten no help. Dong Sik calls him, informs him of their location, and requests that he arrive as soon as possible to take Su Ah. Next, Su Ah's boyfriend arrives at the hospital, and Dong Sik helps him in sneaking in. On the other hand, Su Ah's organs are about to be removed, but he comes just in time. Desperate to leave the place, they try to escape from there but are caught by the director. Immediately, the hospital staff then takes both of them inside the operating room and starts removing the organs of her boyfriend. In the meantime, another patient is messing with fire and burning candles in the director's office. Eventually, the entire facility catches fire and everyone starts panicking, taking advantage of the situation. Su Ah convinces one of the patients to untie them and they manage to escape, but unfortunately, the director drags her boyfriend into the flames and he ends up losing his life. In the present, Nam Su asks Su Ah if she killed her stepfather, but she denies it. She claims that her stepfather used to beat and abuse her and her mother, and even sexually harassed her several times. However, when she returned home after escaping the fire, she discovered he was already dead. Next, Nam Su broadcasts the story to the public, stating that Su Ah's stepfather used to abuse and harass her. He was the one who put her in the mental institution where she was tortured for months. Nam Su adds that he was also a drug addict who used various substances, which is what led him to commit suicide. This story receives a lot of public attention, and the court determines that since they don't have any substantial evidence against Su Ah, they must release her and declare her innocence. Nam Su goes to pick her up as she leaves the correctional facility. Before heading for her house, Su Ah hands him the diary and informs him that the mental institution does not allow patients to carry pens or other sharp instruments. This causes Nam Su to reflect, and we're shown a flashback to real events that happened. It turns out it was her mother who was admitted to the mental institution, not Su Ah. Su Ah's explanations for what happened to her were based on her mother's experiences. She tried to contact the police and seek help finding her mother, but she was ignored everywhere. Her mother then gave the nurse Su Ah's phone number, and she was called. However, her mother was unable to survive the fire and died there. After that, Su Ah went to the house and murdered her father in order to get her revenge. Then she wrote the diary and sent it to the news channel so that the events could be investigated further and she might be proven innocent. The film concludes with Nam Su learning the truth at last and Su Ah realizing that her master plan has been successful. The End